Well, we're actually driving to the cemetery here. We've just left uh, my mother's graveside. My mother died this week, and uh, we just had the funeral. And uh, these are the things that happen. Um, sometimes screwing around just takes a backseat to life when life comes along. So we haven't had a chance to go out and screw around at all this week. And uh, that means we don't have a show this week. But what we do have is an old show that I shot over a year ago about John Browning and his guns. That's cool. And John Browning was a, a, quite a character and quite an inventor. And his endless screwing around with guns took America all the way from the single-shot post-Civil War rifle to the multi-shot lever action rifles to semi-automatic rifles to fully automatic rifles and finally to assault rifles. So his screwing around with guns really changed the nature of guns, changed the nature of warfare, changed the history of America. We're going to go off to his museum which is in Ogden, Utah, where all of the prototypes for all of these amazing guns that he built in his own little shop are housed. There are dozens of prototype guns on display here in the Browning Museum, along with a recreation of the machine shop that Browning used to create many of these guns. Some of the more historically significant guns include this lever-action repeating rifle, this one never went into production. This was the second prototype, but this one, produced in 1886, did go into production by Winchester as the Winchester Repeat Action Rifle. This was updated in 1892 and then again in 1894. The Winchester Lever Action became known as the gun that won the West. It was certainly one of the most successful rifles ever produced. Now this one, the gas-operated rifle, by some measures would have to be considered a complete failure. And yet it was probably Browning's most successful rifle. What it did is it used high-pressure gases inside the barrel to cause the rifle to cock itself, creating a semi-automatic rifle. Now later it was realized that the recoil could be utilized to do the exact same thing. But this gas-operated rifle was a proof of concept, so even though it didn't really work very well, it proved the concept leading to this gun, the Colt semi-automatic pistol. Now this was certainly a successful weapon. Incidentally, I have the second one in the row here in my collection. These were embraced by the military, as well as a lot of individuals, as a personal defense weapon. But it's a design which is still in use today. Now here's the gun that you might think of when you think of Browning, the pump action repeating shotgun. Browning, as you can see, liked cars too, and he liked to bring guns and cars together, as he did with this prototype. But it was his grandson Matt and his wife Barbara that really started collecting automobiles in 1971, and the fabulous Browning collection is on display here at the museum. Also, there are a lot of cars that belong to other people on loan to the museum. Check out this beautiful 1932 Lincoln. And this 1929 Packard with a special compartment for your golf bag. And this equally luxurious 1929 Graham Page. In the foreground here we can see a Pierce Arrow. I love Pierce Arrows. Now Pierce Arrow made a really nice bus and some of those buses were converted into rail buses or a galloping goose by the Colorado vernacular. You can spot a Pierce Arrow by these built-in sort of streamlined headlights. This is a 1911 Knox. 
Look at the engine, how it has exposed valve push rods. I love that kind of thing. And notice too that the car has a mother-in-law seat. The mother-in-law gets to ride outside in the weather. And this is some very early iron, a 199 Stearns. Now this is the epitome of early iron. This is a 1901 Oldsmobile. Oldsmobile was the very first car manufactured in America. Well, there you go, uh, John Browning and his guns. Quite the inventor. Uh, easy to sometimes forget that all of this comes from his screwing around. If he hadn't been out in his little shop, little tiny shop, building gun after gun after gun and just screwing around with that, uh, none of those guns ever would have been built. So uh, sometimes necessity is the mother of invention, but more often than not, screwing around is the dad. <laughs> That's certainly the case in this case. I hesitated to put this show up back a year ago when I made it because of all the various controversies surrounding guns and the gun nuts. I'm not letting anybody take my guns. Uh, and people who are very anti-gun and have an agenda and people who are overly pro-gun and have an agenda and people who are afraid of guns and uh, people who worship guns, and I just didn't really want to become part of that discussion. I'm gonna start killing people. But I do think it's very interesting to see these guns and uh, to keep guns in a context of what they really are and the purpose that they have served historically and uh, the amazing uh, devices that they are and how this one guy screwing around with these guns reshaped America. If you haven't uh, been over to the channel, pop over to the channel. Uh, there's a link down in here that'll take you there, the little rocket ship logo, and that will take you to the channel, and you can subscribe, of course. You can also go to toymantelevision.com and subscribe from there and uh, see some other fun things. A little subscribe button is appearing about right now, right up in here, a little blue button. Just click on that and you will automatically be subscribed to the channel. I'm not sure how you found this movie on the internet. I hope you didn't find it boring because we're going to be back here again in one week, hopefully in a more cheerful set of circumstances, having done some actual significant screwing around. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.